Have questions about diesel engines? Well, this is Diesel Talk. Welcome to episode 11 of Diesel Talk. Today we have four questions. Uh, one is involving a C18. Yes, that's a real cat engine. We have a question involving what's a pre-cooler and what's an after-cooler and what's the differences between them. We have a question involving what are the voltage ranges that an electronic injector operates at. And we also have a question involving the torque that a diesel engine makes, makes compared to a gasoline engine and why do diesels produce so much more torque than a gasoline engine, okay? Very good questions. And before we get on to the questions, I wanted to say thank you to the sponsors of the show this week. We had three donations this week. We had a $50 donation from Steven, thank you very much. We had a $20 donation from Jonathan. And we also had a $50 donation from Mike. But Mike also sent me some uh, some shirts and a hoodie, and I'm actually wearing his hoodie. And this is the company name there. And he's in Pennsylvania. He sent me this nice hoodie and a $50 donation, so I wanted to say thank you for that, Mike. And if you would like to send donations to the uh, channel, it's adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. And on to the questions. Thank you. Okay, so Cody asks, do you have any specs for a C18? And I replied back wondering what he meant, like, as far as specifics for what. And he basically just wanted the displacement and the horsepower. Um, so a C18 is an 18-liter CAT inline-six diesel engine. It's based off the C15, which is based off the 3406. It basically uses, from what I could research, because I've only seen these engines, I've never actually had one torn apart. Um, I do know they put them in... Um, fire trucks things like that um things that were really wanted a lot of horsepower and it's basically a beefier version of a c15 uh same dimensions block and everything from what i could tell the displacement's quite a bit higher though it was i'll show you a little displacement picture here almost 1100 cubic inches um it uses since it's based off the c15 it's wet liners overhead camshaft electronic unit injectors and the big difference between them, other than the three liters of displacement, is the horsepower. Um, the one engine I was researching, which is a CJP serial number prefix, it had 950 horsepower. And that's a 2,400 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Now, the C15, I, on some of the models like the MXS, you could go up to 600 horsepower. But, I mean, 950, that's a big jump, even for a 3-liter uh, increase in torque. Um, other than that, basically, all your components and everything will be very similar, if not the same, as your C15. Obviously, it's probably going to use different injectors, turbocharger, camshaft, uh, liners, things like that. It would need a different, um, most likely a different crankshaft uh, with the, you know, the additional displacement. So... That's specs on a C18. Um, you know, if you really want a lot of horsepower, maybe you can find one of those out of a, I don't know, a, a wrecked fire truck or some sort of emergency vehicle, possibly military as well. Um, so C18, real engine. So Jason asks, what's the difference between a pre-cooler and an after-cooler? And some people call them aftercooler, some people call them ATAX, which stands for air to air aftercooler. Um, some call them a CAC, which is charge air cooler. There's a bunch of different names for them. Basically, your, your aftercooler, we'll just call it that, is what sits in front of your radiator and it's air to air. So your boosted air after it leaves the turbocharger goes through the, the aftercooler. It then uses the outside air getting drawn across it to reduce the temperature of the charged air, and then it gets pushed into your intake manifold. Because as things get compressed, the heat contained in them and the friction of compressing the molecules increases the temperature. So if you can decrease the temperature with it under pressure, and then you want to cool, you want to cool as possible intake charge for a dense air into your cylinders. So that's what that's for. So what's a pre-cooler? 
So on the twin turbo cats, when they switch to the twin turbos, so your C15s with the twin turbos, your C11s, C13s with turbos, they had something called a pre-cooler. And this was used in conjunction with an after cooler. So a pre-cooler after your second turbo. So on a twin turbo, you have your air gets pulled through the air cleaner, gets into your turbocharger, your low pressure turbocharger. That's boosted. It then gets forced into your high pressure turbocharger, which it then increases the pressure of the air even more. Since these systems run at higher boost and the air is getting more and more compressed, the temperature increases of the air. So since you want a cooler intake charge, you need to cool that air. So you have to send it to the CAC. But since a truck's hood doesn't really increase in size from a twin turbo to a single turbo, um, you know, you can't really make the CAC bigger and bigger. So they made something called a pre-cooler. So the pre-cooler, after the second turbocharger, the air is forced through a pre-cooler, which is a coolant to air cooler. So it runs coolant through it. It's basically the opposite of a radiator, whereas a radiator uses air drawn across coolant to decrease the temperature of the coolant. This uses air, or this uses coolant with air drawn across it to decrease the temperature of the air. And so basically, you're just dropping the temperature from the really high temperature that the secondary or the high pressure turbocharger is pushing out through the pre-cooler, drops temperature slightly, then it goes through the CAC or after cooler back into your intake manifold. So it's basically a pre after cooler. So it's called a pre cooler. That is what a pre cooler is. And that's the difference between a pre cooler and an after cooler. Um, if you notice you're getting coolant um, in your intake at all or in your turbocharger boots or anything, check the pre cooler because that's really the only place in that system where coolant would be introduced into the um, air system there before reaching the head. Okay, that was a pretty good question. And Amarno asks, electrically, the injectors on what range of voltage work? How the high voltage gets built up? Thank you. So, the engine only operates on 12 volts. The ECM, which controls all the sensors and everything, um, it's only supplied with 12 volts and grounds. Now, most of the sensors and everything are on a uh, 5 volt reference voltage. But the injectors actually operate on a much higher voltage. They operate, according to CAT here, at 105 volts. Now, some of the valve covers, you'll notice they have a sticker that says 90 to 120 volts, uh, depending on what model engine it is. But basically, your ECM gets its 12 volt voltage, just battery voltage, and then it bumps that up to 105 volts. And what it does then is it uses that higher voltage to fire the injectors. Now, on most ECMs that go out, it's usually for current faults on the injectors. So usually that system that's increasing the voltage and then firing the injectors, that's basically the hardest task for that ECM to do. And that's usually the failure point of those ECMs. And it uses that to fire the solenoids on each injector because on any sort of electronic and unit injector, including like the C15s that have the rocker arm or a Huey system, where it uses high pressure oil, or even a common rail, which uses really high fuel pressure, it still has an electronic solenoid, and the ECM fires though those, and it uses the higher voltage, the 105 volts. We have uh, Avery, and he asks, maybe I already talked about this, sorry if you did, um, but why do diesel engines make more torque at low RPMs than a gas engine? Is it the higher compression? higher boost, longer stroke, or something else? Uh, sorry for the stupid question. Not a stupid question. Um, and thank you for the videos. So, why do diesel engines make so much more torque? Um, now, they usually have a much lower torque range than a gas engine. I've talked about horsepower on here before. You know, horsepower, you need lots of speed and torque. But a diesel makes a lot more torque at a lot lower RPM. And why is that? And they usually don't rev as high. Well, basically, two bigger things. Obviously, it has a turbocharger, but that's not really the reason 
why they make so much torque. Even the older engines before they were turbocharged would make a lot more torque than a gas engine would. Um, now, a turbo will help more with horsepower because it would force more and more air into that cylinder. So the big two things are, and he even noted in the question, your compression ratio and the mechanical advantage that the engine has due to the longer stroke. So a lot of gas engines rely on higher RPMs to build horsepower. And higher RPMs, well, they don't usually like a long stroke. And diesel engines usually have a longer stroke. And if you think about a longer stroke, you get a mechanical advantage over your crankshaft. Think of a pry bar. The longer the pry bar is, the more force you can exert on whatever you're trying to pry. Well, think of your crankshaft. So you have your crankshaft in the center, and it's connected to a piston via a connecting rod, but it's not connected in the center. It's connected on a, on a crank throw. So you have your connecting rod length and your piston. Well, on a higher revving engine, you'll usually have a shorter stroke, which means the distance between the crankshaft uh, the crankshaft base and then the crank arm is going to be shorter because the shorter the arm is, the shorter the stroke because it's going in circles. So on a longer stroke engine, you actually have a longer distance between the center of the crankshaft and then your crank arm. So what you're doing is as the piston is pushing down, you know, you're trying to turn the center of the crankshaft. Well, the further the distance you get away from the crankshaft gives you that mechanical advantage. And the longer the distance is, is the longer the stroke. Because remember, it's going in a circle around your, your crankshaft base circle. So if you can get a longer stroke, you'll get more mechanical advantage over your crankshaft. And that really helps to build a lot of torque. Now, the other is the compression ratio. Diesels can obviously run a lot of higher compression ratios because they don't have to deal with pre-ignition like a gasoline engine does. And... That's also helpful with the long stroke because you need a higher volume of air to get compressed to make the high compression ratio. Now, you don't need to have a long stroke to have a high compression ratio because you could have, you know, a really small stroke but a really big bore. As long as the total volume of gases getting compressed is from a large to a small percentage, that's where your compression ratio is. Not necessarily the stroke, but diesels like long stroke, and low revving RPM. Hope that made sense. All right, uh, good questions in this show. I thank you, everyone, for watching.